Good morning. Today is the 21st, I think. It's certainly Sunday in August. I think it's the 21st of August 2016. Uh, I can tell you the day. It is perhaps not the date, but it's Friday was the day that I seen the story about Pat Hickey in the Irish Times. And I'm going to tell it to you now. You know some of it. You don't know it all. And it was just when I seen Hickey, Mr. Pat himself, in the papers, being jailed in Brazil, though for one night, the, I remembered the very important story that I've never told anyone else, simply because I forgot it. I'm on the Pedriza, Sierra and what are what 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 the Spanish say what uh, the Arabs say what so what Arama that's down there is the Manzanares El Real it has town status because it has an Ayamento a council but really it's just a large village if you could even call it large. And that's one of the reservoirs for the Manzanares River, which flows through here. I'm about, uh, I think, I'm not sure, I'm about 1,700 meters up. But don't quote me, because I can't remember. And it doesn't much matter. The story isn't about the corruption of Pat Hickey. It's the story of my retirement, where Pat Hickey, the president of the Irish Olympic Council, was a guest of mine. Not many people know that. Directly from me, though many do know it. And It's in three parts. Oh, I'm very tired, very tired indeed. This is an easy walk up to this hill because it's adjacent to the, to our friends, the uh, Cantino Kiosco Torero, and over here is Yelmo. I've been up there, but not to that very top point, but right to the base of that top point. That was some years ago, too. Anyway, the uh, Lamara, you are the one whose restaurant I went to for my retirement party, my private retirement party. I did not have a public retirement party. I knew too many people. They didn't know me, though they thought they did. And... pay you for your goodwill, for your honesty, for the fact that you are the, probably the most honest man I ever met in Ireland. That's saying a lot, because I met a lot of shysters in my time, and it could be true to say I was a bit of a shyster myself, but I hope not too much. I never loved money enough to hang myself for it. So that might be my saving grace. Anyway, uh, I invited Michael and Moriarty and his wife Blonnet, drinking buddies and laughing buddies, and sure didn't we. We drink more than the King of Prussia himself. And we laughed more than any clown you could meet. And we seemed to think we lived well, and we did well. And Michael worked for the Irish Permanent as head of lending. Head of all lending. But he only personally dealt with anything over a million pounds. So he told me in 1996. And I retired in your party, I think it was 2001. Very good. And his very good buddy, his best friend actually, 
I invited Mr. Patrick. President of the Irish Olympics Council and his wife. His wife couldn't come because she was on a charity walk in Chile for some group or other, which is fair enough. I invited my erstwhile solicitor, Michael O'Sullivan, and his wife, whose name I think was Helen. I liked Helen. I liked his wife. I invited two others who will arrive shortly into the story. Let me say it, the story I'm going to tell is true. I haven't embellished, I haven't exaggerated, I haven't in any way adulterated the story. I'm telling it as it was for the first time after the fact. That's 15 years ago. Anyway, before we arrived that day and the day previously, Blonnet and Ishmael asked me to change the venue. They didn't know you, they didn't want to go there. It wasn't a salubrious and important restaurant. Indeed, it was a local family restaurant. But they didn't know me well enough for all the fact that we spent a lot of our lives, 11 years together so much. Boozing, laughing, joking, dining, doing, being. What we do in Ireland in those days. And they wanted me to change the venue to somewhere more central, somewhere more apartment, somewhere they could feel the prestige. But as I say, I was giving you my retirement party, even though there was only seven invited, because I think you deserved all. All the other places I gave business to continuously, you were too far away for me in Port Marnock. And they could have expected it, but I never told them they didn't find out subsequently, and some weren't very pleased, especially the Germano Terranoni, whose restaurants and places I'd visited for many, many years, as you'll remember, because that's where I first met you in 1986, Lamara Habib, Chef de Cuckoo, Chef de... Oh, well, anyway, neither here nor there. So, I refused. I rang you, and I, as I'd forgotten to tell you, to get vintage Bollinger for the party. You go out on a high, go out on a high properly. Vintage, not non-vintage, not Cordeno, can't stand that stuff. And certainly not Maui. Bah, Maui. I asked you, two days notice to get the Bollinger vintage and only vintage and I have to say you did better than I expected but anyway to the day of my party Pat Hickey arrived first and I opened the four well, actually you opened the first bottle of Bollinger and we were talking outside, and he asked me, why did I invite him? And I reminded him, I think he'd well forgotten it, that many years ago, about six years previous, I'd uh, met them, the three, Michael, Blonnet, and Pat, I can't remember if his wife was there. I don't think so. In Jerry's Salam's uh, Sinners, you will remember that he married my cousin. Jerry Salam did, and him from Egypt, Cairo, 
and isn't Ireland a small place for all that? It is indeed. And uh, when I was invited to sit down, uh, Michael had uh, poured some of the Moe non vintage into a glass for me. And uh, Pat said, uh, hold it, not too much. He didn't pay for that. Which was out of standing for somebody in Pat Hickey's class. I don't mean his uh, personal class, I mean his business class. And I duly noted and filed. I stayed for about half an hour chatting and drinking with him and didn't take any more though and left. I've uh, met Pat Hickey many times, talked to him personally and within the four of us, Michael Moriarty and Blonnet and Pat, and I find him very urbane, but in my private chats I told him to be very careful. We're going back here now to the 90s because uh, everyone knew that the IOC was corrupt from top to bottom. The dogs in the street, as they say in Ireland, knew it. But he told me that he only ever uh, received uh, expenses, which was odd because every day he had a, 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 Mer a chauffeur-driven Mercedes on call, even when he wasn't working or doing anything for the IOC. Yes, how the mighty fall with their small lies. I don't know why. Why do people tell me lies? Because I don't care anyway. Anyway, after telling him that uh, I wasn't to have too much of the Maui because I hadn't paid for it, it was like the slap of a wet fish. Oh, he was seriously shocked. I told him that we had six bottles of vintage Bollinger in, and he could drink as much as he wanted. There was no payment due. I knew he'd stay, because Blonnet and Mike had yet to arrive. He didn't know, or I don't know that he knew, I can't remember if he knew uh, Michael O'Sullivan, I don't think so, and Helen, and he certainly didn't know the two final guests that were coming. So I knew he'd stay, and remember, free booze and Bollinger Vintage, none of that shite uh, NV, and vintage, that so many people like dropping the name The Widow Bollinger. Yes, The Widow Bollinger. I don't use terms like that. It's, it suggests being cognoscenti, but it's not. Read somewhere probably in the Daily Mail or the Daily Telegraph. And That Bali, that was the other one they used to call it. Well, I never did that either, because to me, respecting quality, I gave it its name. Bollinger. The House of Bollinger. Anyway, neither here nor there. Blonnet and Ishmael turned up next, with Mike and Helen arriving soon after. My last set of guests arrived last. They were not the urbane, wealthy, intellectual, educated business people as Pat Hickey, Michael Sullivan, and Mike Moriarty were. Sergeant, Mr. Sergeant, and Nora, how do you say that, Mr. Sergeant, and Nora and Michael Clarity from Harcourt Terrace. He was a branch around the corner, a very, very good friend of mine over the years. He helped me in many ways, always trying to help me to cut the booze, whereas Blonnet always wanted to have more. 
Anyway, they were the final invitees. There you are. It's gone 15 minutes. I can't believe it.